So Danny Burroughs read this evening, and uh, for some of you who've been here for the couple of weeks that this has been going on, I've been reading selections from No More Masters, No More Manuscripts, and this is Daniel Burroughs, who is Good Cop, Bad Cop Press. So if any of you are interested in putting together a manuscript, send it off to goodcopbadcoppress at gmail. Just all, run all uh, together like that, and we'll take a look at it. And you guys have a book. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Offerings. Library lights lower. Trains run through corridors. When I speak, I speak from a little room. Over its door hang portraits of women. From their hands fall coins. Leaves fly past windows. I mistake them for birds. I make you offerings of sheet music. You give me pieces of colored glass shaped like flowers. We sit where courtyard statues dwell. We watch their hands, like ours, they indicate visitation, disquiet. I'm going to read one that's from um, Gone Magazine, which came out in 1998, and I was contemplating the usefulness of MFA programs. And this is a poem that did not come out of a writing program, but did come out of a writing class. And the um, assignment was we all had to write down a secret on a piece of paper, put it in a hat, and then everybody had to pick somebody else's secret. And you had to write a poem about whatever your secret was that you received. So that is um, the story behind this next one. I guess at this point I can say is juvenilia. This was a collaborative project that I did um, with a bunch of people, but also uh, with somebody that I was seeing at the time. And it depended on where we were in our relationship, where my poems ended up in the book. So I was trying to remember, like, is this when he was mad at me? And they were like, very in the back. Or was this when he was like, yeah, you're doing all right, I guess. You'll be in the front anyway. <laughs> so, so silly. Um, at his mercy. OK. <laughs> Okay, um, here we go. Gin. The glass of gin, a tiny winter liquid eyes, the final distillation of juniper berries, dusted with the scaly peelings of bird talions. Atop lacquer tables, it sits clean and scoured, as if resting in a snowbank, kind and sinless. It has the clean burn of the inoculation that tamps the skin, causes the virus to lose its logic its thread of seduction upon the cinched membrane of the cell. It calls for ritual, the hollowing out of a rose stem to spill the terrible swell upon the lips and throat. It calls for slaughter, the eyes are shot through with fire thorn, the hands unhinged, flapping, large stuttering tongues. It was then I heard you, in the attic, as if carrying some weapon you could not quite handle as if scraping your feet across the jagged poison of coral. Juniper wrenched, you were trimming your thoughts to airy bursts of baby's breath. Up there, you set down a glass anchor, observed its label, Art Deco, mm -hmm. lit up like a miniature marquee. All the world, a muffled drop away, a thimble full of noise, dwindling to the stillness of silicate. Right 
Raiders rating on Raiders. Um, this is a poem about Victor Hugo's daughter, Adele Hugo, who kept a beautiful tortured journal. So she's in the long tradition of tortured, tragic women. In any event, um, film stills from the life of Adele Hugo. Her father maroons them on an island off of France. His grief over the death of his favorite seals them away. Gone Paris of the empire, gone its sainted streets. He watches his youngest, a bastard, he can smell it, walk his gardens. Her lips move, her arms reach. She is no good as a recluse. Outside their walls, English soldiers practice their maneuvers. She will make one her life, her work. When she sees him, her bones jump, oceans rush in. She loves his name, Pison, its consonants, with piston, pistol, prison. She loves his lieutenancy, the clack of his sword against his boots, the dust his horses stir. When he leaves, she follows him by night, by ship, to Halifax, where she will dine on pear peppers, grouse, and raspberry ice with the innkeeper and his wife. And room paid with her father's coin, she writes herself a paper house where her lieutenant will propose. He sees only the purse strings that tie her to her father, the bloodlines that don't. Through glass and branches, she watches him with his mistress and her little dogs. It snows, she buys paper, the snow is paper. When he leaves to the Antilles, the seance's knocking table tells her to follow with all her wool's lace and men's top hats of mercury. She watches the Atlantic heave with seaweed. Her clothes are the color of crabs, barnacles, primordial worlds. She has reached noonday, witching hour for the Romans. Imperial parrots flash blue and yellow overhead. Columbus named this island Dominica, Sunday, day of rest day of no naming, the day God did nothing. She writes her father, soon, soon, the engagement is soon. Fever wets her clothes, there is no snow, she buys no papers. Her sleeves have broken from her shoulders. An ex-slave sla saves her, ex, because she is known only as not that thing she was before. She draws the fever out, she telegrams the father, he comes, though she is not his favorite. She has three more days than it is Paris in the asylum where she will watch the century turn. Tonight, with her father, she listens to feral cats howl. The island's lake boils over. Hmm. <clears throat> and rather than a journey, this will be poem that's somewhat a portrait of a confined space after a long difficult journey of that sort. The Old Woman's Room. The farmer next door puts up a fence to keep his cows out of her yard. She pretends the orange light bulb at the far end of the kitchen is the light of Dominica. These Englishmen here, not like the ones in London whose bowler hats meant they were bankers, Hunched over their roast duck, they worried about their mistresses and their lovers. Even the poor ones had polish on their shoes, their teeth, the enamel of things being important. Out here in Devon, the men still come to her door with red noses and Wellington boots to complain of noise or else go to the police. How can she tell them she danced outside because four drinks gave her back Paris, gave her arms bracelets, her neck ribbons? Afterwards, she picks pieces of her manuscript from hat boxes and windowsills. She folds them into paper flowers. She pins one to her hat. It has been so since 18. The question, adorn herself or adorn the paper. So she is not so different from ladies who hid their writing beneath their embroidery because to write was to be vulgar, to divest oneself of womanhood. Here in Cheriton, Fritz Payne, her dresses no longer lie on the floor, emptied of her body because the man wants her to bed with him. Instead, they hang in a closet. What she wants is gold powder for her temples, rose water for her wrists, to not feel houses, hats, all arrayed against you. Maybe in a month they will fix the grate. The rector will come for a visit. The one taxi will take her downtown, where she can look 
at the one church and its steeple. She pulls apart her paper flowers. She erects a red room where a woman tips a candle flame to the curtains and the fire blots out the gray of England and the fire is the light of Dominica. This is a Danny favorite, so I'll read this. <laughs> the Peddlers. Cheap Jack Tally men who deal in newspaper candle and cigar stub pass through gates of walled cities, a peddler's tax on their heads. With no saw buck, no shekel, they look for places to cast their lot. They dredge the low tide for coins. You can see their faces when a long time before giving in. Now you can't see them. They wheel carts past numberless doors, past men in a ferment. Flakes from their beards mix with dust blown up from the street. Chamberlains and secretaries don't know them. Lackeys and footmen don't know them. Even criers selling sawdust bread don't know them. If they are called at all, they are called groundlings, earth below salt. At best, gagmen without hat or bells. Counted with oxen, herded out of cities in three days time, they are forbidden, tankard, and table. And though they drum a wooden leg for the brass tin salt pile, the flash note slip pipe, there are no, prog there are no pilgrims, there is no progress. Only the scotch fowl, the dog in the manger, with no dance, no penny, no song, no supper. Thank you, Jane. And one more round of applause for all our speakers, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. The next one titled is going to be on Halloween. Feel free to Woo! Uh, <laughs> Masks yeah. on. Wish Jack a happy birthday on the way out. There's Thank a suggestion box. Guys. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Jack. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was a